Good morning. Well, this is our episode. This is the one where we're going to be taking off to Wheatley Provincial Park. In this episode, we want to show you a few pointers um, in terms of how to get your trailer connected to your truck. Um, I realize that there might be some folks that are watching this Hiking with Kathleen who have never gone camping in a travel trailer before. So stick around, we're going to show you some pointers and show you Wheatley Provincial Park. Okay, so Shannon's just out in the uh, back. You can see her back there. She's just uh, raising the tongue so that the hitch receiver will go underneath that. And uh, we'll show you how we make contact because okay. we each are equipped with a walkie-talkie. You can see I use my mirror. Let's give that a try. So with that the case that being the case <clears throat> I just watch to see how it's looking and then I know if I have to maybe uh, adjust and back up a little bit or move forward and you'll see that Shannon's got some gloves on it's because it's a pretty dirty job getting the truck and trailer hitched and some of the other jobs so we have an electric jack so that's why she's pushing a button and I should fear feel a clunk there you might have seen that so now we know that we're all set, so I have to okay, that's good. put it in park and put on the emergency brakes and then I can shut off. So the next thing that, that we're doing here is Shannon is raising the tongue because we're going to be putting sway bars on, which actually minimizes the amount of um, free sway there is in towing a trailer. It makes it a lot better. A lot more secure okay and then I'm gonna be uh, doing the same it's good Shannon thinks of all these things in order to keep us from getting all greasy and stuff which is usually what happens push down you make sure it's secure and it slides right over and you lock it in place as we've come to realize, we have delicate hands. So we use a block of wood to push the cotter pin in. There. So Shannon is now lowering, right, lowering the jack because we need to get those uh, black pads out from underneath and those get stored ready for us to uh, get ready to tow and pull this out of the driveway. We will also cross these safety chains. Okay, we have one more thing and that is we have an emergency brake that Shannon is going to attach. It's got the carabiner there. It's gonna to connect to one of these. Okay, so I did mention in one of our last videos that Shannon devises these things that hold um, 
the wood and the, uh, the the rubber mats that we put under the stabilizers and under that hitch, or sorry, under the uh, the tongue. She learned that on YouTube. That's why we have milk crates on top of our batteries. So we are going to a non-electrical site. So we have been uh, happily charging these two batteries that are attached to the uh, trailer inverter. And there's a solar panel that's up on the roof. So all of that has been working to give us the power we expect we're going to use as we go away for a week. I tend to wear whatever I'm no longer using. Yes, we used to have motorcycles, and yes, we used to ride to Friday the 13th in Port Dover, Ontario. But anyway, you're going to get greasy, you're going to get dirty, and so it's a good idea to just wear something you don't commonly wear or you don't mind if you get grease on it. So I tend to choose either old clothing or dark clothing so it doesn't show the dirt. Next thing we're going to do when I get back in the truck is we're going to check the lights, make sure that cable that's connected to the truck is allowing the light signal so we can make sure drivers behind us can see the right, left, and uh, the turn signals and the brakes. Okay, let's back off of the Anderson level. So we've got those Anderson levels, those little half moons or crescents that the uh, that is on one side of the trailer so that it is level and that is what we are now going to remove because we're going to bring it with us to set this up on the campsite so uh, we just pulled away from the house just so that she can put the drain uh, the eaves trough extension uh, back on we don't want to leave that in case there is a downpour we don't want the water to dump near the house but anyway it was pretty well a tight squeeze with the trailer so she's just tending to a few things there. Uh, a couple of other things that you have to know, and that is you're activating the toe, this button right here. So that's, you know, when you have the, um, when you have the tow package on your vehicle, it's very important to always use the tow package. Uh, position for one that activates your um, your electric brakes okay and then the other thing is um, it also makes it easier on the engine when you're taking off and when you're slowing down because Let's it's check the signals, please. because it's doing it in tow uh, mode okay so we're going to check the signals make sure our lights are working So we're just driving along. We're just uh, continuing on our way to Wheatley. And just wanted to mention a couple of things. Uh, so inside the truck, uh, just so you're aware, if this isn't something that you've done before, but when you're traveling long distances or even short distances for that matter, and you have heavy things in the back seat, what I did is I used, um, ratchets. yeah, I used ratchet straps for everything. So you can see there's water. We have brought two containers full of water. And that's uh, something I've mentioned in a previous video. You can't always trust that when you show up at a campground that the potable water is actually gonna be potable. Um, and, and maybe it might have minerals in it and things like that that we're not used to and, and maybe find distasteful. So anyway, one of those bottles uh, is spring water you buy at the grocery store. The other is an empty one of those um, yeah, dispenser bottles that I just filled up from the tap at home. So anyway, we use those inside our trailer along with, um, a, like it's a, a kind of a motorized dispenser that we power using a USB plug-in. And that provides us with water that we're going to drink. But any other water that comes out of the trailer reservoir, we're drinking directly, you know, from the park when we've filled it up. So I just wanted to mention, we ratchet everything into place so it keeps it safe if something should happen and we're in a collision and things are moving around. So everything is secured in the back seat. Okay, so we're just pulling into Wheatley uh, Provincial Park and your priority here is to get water. Okay, so this is giving you a bit of a demo in terms of how you fill up your trailer. So as I said at Wheatley, um, this is just uh, sort of outside the main gate, but 
you only use hoses that are marked in blue because that's potable water as opposed to the stuff that's used to rinse out your um, sewage area. Some people might find it confusing to know which one of the places do you connect your hose. This, and it takes a long time, it's 30 gallons. Shannon is turning, on, she's inside the trailer right now, and she's turning on the water pump and the water heater, because what happens is that takes another five gallons to fill up that space. So you wanna fill up as much as possible when you have free flowing water. If you were in a campground uh, that has a connection for water, so you are constantly hooked up, that's the area that says city water, okay? So it's a connection that says uh, city water or city, uh, city water connection. So that's your constant water connection. Otherwise, you're looking for the one that says fresh water connection because you're just putting your, your hose in until you fill up the reservoir. Okay? This is great. We're here at about 11.15, uh, 11.30 in the morning. So there was no lineup of other people coming in because really you're not supposed to uh, enter the site until 2 o'clock. That's it's like when you go to a hotel and you know you might not be able to check in until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So in our case it's 2 o'clock. But if there's nobody on the site from last night's reservation then we can go on and set up early. That's okay. Okay well this will take us several minutes. Just wanted to show you this part of the process. You pump out and you can see that there is a water spout there but it's red. This is the sign you look for. So that you make sure you're only dealing with potable water. Shannon's gonna be backing this up. What can I say? She's had lots of experience towing boats. And she does a really great job. So, this is our site. Ha ha ha, look at the view. But I can see they said li limited, um, <laughs> limited privacy because we got neighbors right there but that's okay okay I gotta help Shannon with backing this in okay honey uh, cut it more so okay so it's a bit tight at the front because of uh, campground posts and things like that but Shannon did a great job And look at that awesome view, right? That's what we want, is that awesome view. And we're very close to neighbors, so that's why they said limited privacy. You can see their trailer. But we have other things we're going to be putting up, and this is where we're going to have the awning out front. Uh, we'll have our dining shelter. So, I mean, that's fine. But it's so awesome that we have this ability to just probably put our canoe in the water right here. So that's the Anderson leveler and Shannon has it in position and then she'll chalk it with that little rectangular plastic piece in front. That's right. So that will lock the tire in place once we get it leveled. She goes around with um, a leveler and makes sure that uh, the whole trailer is level from side to side. Well, here it is three hours later and we're pretty well all set up now. So I'll show you what we've done on the outside and you'll see that we are looking as we're ready here to stay here for a week. We just went and filled up our two five gallon water containers. Shannon's working on one over there. And of course the priority is to get the cat tent set up. That big red thing, that's the thing that has now become her travel suite. So she has lots of room to move around as we bring her here. So anyway, now we're all set up and now it's time 
for me to have some lunch. Shannon's already had hers. Ah, gosh, what a view. We feel so fortunate having this site at Wheatley Provincial Park. We'll check in with you. We'll check in with you again, and you, I think, will be pretty impressed with some of the bird footage I know we're going to be able to get from here. Where you get great egrets, uh, great blue herons, right there. So anyway, that's coming up. I am just loving this site. And the fact that we are right here on a creek, so there's wildlife right here in front of us. Um, some of it I've already video videoed. Um, this particular nook has great blue herons coming and going. Um, there's another heron I have to look up, crane or it's, uh, it looks like it might be an immature because it's got some brown streaking, so I'm gonna have to look that one up. I wonder if it could be an American bittern. I don't know. So I'll have to check that. Anyway, um, I'm really, really pleased with this campsite. And the fact that this is day one, and we were concerned because we thought, oh, it's going to be really hot because it's going to be around 30 degrees every day pretty well that we're going to be here. It's not an issue. We've got some nice cover from the, uh, you know, the, the leaf cover. But also, I think it's going to allow enough sun to get through in order to keep our solar panels filled up. Right now everything's all topped up because we've just come from home. But uh, anyway, I'm really excited to be able to see what kind of wildlife is available for us to video and to be able to show to you. So stick around.